I don't know what it means to be a real, complete human being, but I've met a few. I've met my guru. I've met a number of saints in India over the years. His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Quite a few of the Rinpoches and Lamas that I've met over the years. You sense there's something there that is not in the, is not alive yet in the rest of us to the same degree. And what it seems to be is a lack of fear. It seems to be a lack of selfish desires. It seems to be a very open and available and accessible heart. You know, somebody asked His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, said, why does everybody love you so much? And he said, I don't know. He said, maybe it's because I've spent every moment of my life caring about and considering the happiness of other people. Every moment of his life, caring about and considering the happiness of others. There isn't a little secret stash of Dalai Lama-ness, which he has to protect at the expense of other people, which he has to hold back. He gives everything as it's appropriate to be given because he also has wisdom. You don't throw you know, pearls before swine, as Jesus said. You don't, you don't give stuff to people they can't use. You give what's useful for them. And he knows what to do. So he's always giving, giving teachings, giving blessings, giving all kinds of things just like my guru, constantly, 24-7, anyone who came to him get what they need. Because there was nobody in there. There was no secret stash of me in there. There's nobody even giving. Because even that's too much. That sense of pride that you get from giving, or sense of, even a sense of identity as being a giver. There is only giving in a being like that. No one giving. There's just this flow of stuff that comes out of him constantly, out of spontaneous compassion. It's not, they're not trying. They love, they're in love with everything and everyone. They see us for who we truly are. They see who we think we are and they just laugh at that. But they see the truth and so they are doing what's best for us to help us find that place in ourselves. And we, of course, have to find it ourselves. Otherwise, we don't, have the, we don't develop the muscles that we need then to help other people find it in themselves. Everybody has to do it themselves, or at least so it seems. You know, if you think you're you, then you better do something. If you don't think you're you, there's nothing to do. But if, since we think we are who we think we are, we better get our shit together and do something. And it's not... It's not only in beings with, with, who have that particular stamp, like His Holiness or my guru. You meet people who just are willing to give you everything at any time to share what they have without the fear that they won't be enough. My guru didn't own anything. All the temples that he had, he didn't have. They were government trusts. He. He wore a, 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 a little dhoti around his waist, sometimes a, a, a t-shirt or a, a, and a blanket over it all. And when he went somewhere, he walked off with just that. And it, no one knew if he's coming back. He didn't save for tomorrow, you know. He was so in the moment and so beyond fear and desire that he had no reason to even imagine that he had to save for tomorrow. You know? When you meet a real human being, it's, it's always a shock because their hearts are available. They're not protecting. They're not afraid of you. You know, we're afraid of everything. You know, we're afraid of everything. You know, we, we get up afraid, we go to sleep afraid. Some of us have a little less fear than others in certain areas and some more. But basically fear, we get navigating around that fear all the time. We have a comfort zone we like to stay in. We don't go here, we don't go there. We stay with the people who, you know, because we're afraid. These guys go everywhere. 
anywhere. Maharaj used to sit in the street. He would sleep in the, in the culverts, you know, the rain, those rain tunnels, you know. He'd sleep anywhere. He had ashrams, he had devotees' houses you could go to anywhere, and he would go anywhere. But he was quite happy lying in the middle of, of the road, you know, totally at ease. It was all his. And when, you know, and he would joke around, he would say, we try to give him money. Some people, some of the Westerners there had some bucks and try to make a donation to the temple. He would never take. He said, why are you trying to give me these few, few dollars? All the, money in America, all the money in America is mine. And he laughed. Ha! <laughs> but he means it. If he's God, the whole universe is his. He is the whole universe. He doesn't need anything. It's impossible to, it's impossible to, to understand these things. You know, what you have to do is, by your own desire and longing and by grace, trip over one of these guys or one of these women, one of these beings in your life so you get a taste of what it really is. You have to have a taste of it. You have to see it. You have to come out into the sunlight once, just to know that it's a little different than these lights. 